We have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Did you guys know that? We're thinking about buying or selling, that they need to buy or sell at this point. Are you digging into why? Why? What's got, why, what's got you thinking about buying something in six months, next month, next year, two years? What's got you thinking about selling? They realize, wow, this person cares about me. Now, if I keep that list between 15 and 20, I'm gonna close one deal a week, every week. And if you wanna close two a week, have 25 plus. It's real simple math. So what about your current home doesn't work anymore? Or what in your life changed? I try to be as positive as I can. So it's really hard for me to go into the negative, but I need to go into the negative of their life so that I can find the positive solution. But yeah, like, let them go. I don't have an objection handler for that. Like, go. you wanna go try that? Go, go see what it's like and let me know, you know, what their behaviors are around us providing the best service possible. A real, live, one-on-one -on -one conversation. Can y'all make some noise real quick? Uh, cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all wanna learn about some prospecting? Uh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. This is my buddy, Sean Getty. Give him a hand. I am Ricky Carruth. I'm in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I've been in sales for 21 years now, so. You guys know Alabama? What's the first word that comes to mind when you hear Alabama? Roll, well, damn. Damn. Just football, huh? What's that? Sweet home Alabama. Anybody else? Floribama. Damn. Okay. What, we ain't going to talk about that. No, I don't have my slides, but we have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Did you guys know that? Yeah, some of the most beautiful beaches. The Florida, the Florida coastline goes right into Alabama, a good 40 miles. White, sandy beaches, palm trees, million dollar condos. So if you guys have referrals, I sell golf front condos in Alabama. And uh, they're great Airbnb, they're great Airbnbs, they're great investments. So send me your referrals. That's why I would sign up to be a speaker, is try to get your referrals. No, I'm just kidding kind of out of production, honestly. Um, thanks to EXP. Give it up for EXP. Yeah. Cool. So prospecting, lead gen. Let's just gaze the room really quickly. How many brand new agents under a year in the business? Okay. Uh, one to five years. Okay. Over five years. Okay. So very mixed group. Got it. Um, I'm just going to start out. I'll let Sean kind of jump in here in between and everything. Let me, since we have one hour together, let's give you guys the most possible value that I possibly can. Let's start out with a question of what you guys are having trouble with when it comes to lead gen. So I can kind of have an understanding of what direction you guys want to go with this. That way I'm just not up here jabbing about some stuff you don't care about. Cheap systems. What in the, where are we? <laughs> She's like eating Chinese food, talking about cheap systems, like, like the noodles. Okay, teriyaki chicken, like talking about calls here. Anybody, what are you having trouble with, Lee, prospecting, objections, so on and so forth? Follow up, once you have them. Okay, follow up, anybody else? Get scout broker. Like and the objection that, hey, I want to work with a discount broker. Yeah. Great. Okay. Great. Anybody? What? What's that? To put your money into real. Okay. Got you. Got you. None of, none of those. No. Oh, is this is a real tour, real lead tour. Yeah, I'm just kidding with you. Yeah. Okay, we can get into that. Okay, cool. Let's start with this. This is good. Okay, we got follow up. We got good. Which is like you think you're somebody else. Yeah, you know, I feel like I'm not like who am I if I knew to give people information that I don't even feel that I know yet. Perfect. So let's do this. I'm going to run through this, right? And then I'm going to get, I'll, I'll take each situation. We'll get Sean's two cents. 
I think this is the best way to bring you guys the most value, okay? And then as I do this and answer these questions and give you guys my thoughts, it's probably gonna bring up even more questions and then we can kind of keep this going. I think this is the best way to handle this. Um, so that's what we'll do. So we got follow up, we've got the objection of discount brokers. We've got the objection of the market. We've got where do you spend your money on leads? You've got an out of body experience. Okay. Follow up. Okay. So let me understand the situation. So give me an example. Uh, I'm just building a big database and on Inspire, Circle Dial, and it's all bad. Um, all right, you have them on the leaflet email, but I just don't feel like you're all just following. Okay. Okay. And you're not like calling them and stuff like that or, or following up in any kind of way? What if it's, you know, set up to remind me to call them? And then are you making the calls to call them? And you just feel like they're starting to become like a more and more disconnect as time goes on and they're kind of like starting to become cold to you, kind of ghosting you in this some kind of way? Cool. When you talk to your prospects, right, when they tell you that they're ready to buy or sell, they're thinking about buying or selling, that they need to buy or sell at this point, are you digging into why? As much as I can, yeah. I feel like it's, it's the prior eventually. So they have a great reason why they want to sell, but why they don't want to talk to any agents right now. And then they're listed. So they're not listing with you, but they are relisting. Okay, great. Cool. So let me dive in here and then I'll get your take on it. For me, when somebody wants to, when I, when I encounter a prospect that wants to buy or sell sometime soon, right? Within the next six months, year, whatever the case may be, even if they say I want to sell in two years, my next question is, is if this was my mom or dad is why, why, what's got, why, what's got you thinking about buying something in six months, next month, next year, two years, what's got you thinking about selling? I want to understand the mechanics behind the scene of what's happening in their life that's causing them to make this decision. Until I know that, I can't do anything. I, I don't know how to follow up because I don't know what they're trying to do. So until I do my discovery on why they're trying to do what they're trying to do, I can't follow up because I don't even know what the next step is because I don't even know what they're trying to do. So until I understand that in the deep, to the deepest levels, it does two things. One, they realize, wow, this person cares about me. Number one. Number two, it tells me exactly what I need to do to help them. And now I can put together a plan that's customized around them and what their objections are, objectives are, um, to best serve them and help them get to the finish line of whatever that transaction is. So <clears throat> to, you've got to go deep there before you even know how to follow up. That's it. Um, so I keep a Google sheet or, or a, a, a notebook and I keep anyone on that, sh that, that list that's thinking about buying or selling with me that I could possibly be the agent. I'm keeping a list of everyone who might do so in the next six months. Now, if I keep that list between 15 and 20, I'm going to close one deal a week, every week. If you do what I've done for the last going on 10 years, close two a week. 25 plus active buyers and sellers. Now on that list, if someone tells me that they have decided not to move forward, if they use me as an agent or another agent to do a deal and they're under contract, or if they ghost me, they're off that list. I've got to determine when I'm going to take these people off the list, but I've got to have more people to replace them. So my number stays. If your true number isn't 15 to 20, you're not going to close one a week. But if you do, you will close one a week. And if you want to close two a week, have 25 plus. It's real simple math. This isn't a complicated business at all. We're just overcomplicating it and adding too many complicated systems into our business, too many things, and now it's a mess. So go deeper with why they're looking to buy or sell and then put together a customized follow-up plan in place for them with them. Okay, that's why you want to do that? Oh, okay, great. Well, here's the next step. Here's what we need to do next. I'm going to send you properties or maybe I need to meet them. It's not always the appointment, guys. Mainstream coaching will say, set the appointment, get the contract signed, close the deal. 
that may not be the next step for this prospect. Remember, I'm trying to create a relationship for the rest of my life with every prospect. If I just try to close every single prospect, I'm going to lose 90% of those people in the market who will do business with me later. I'm throwing all that business away because they feel pressured and they're going to go deal with an agent who they feel like really cares about them. If somebody doesn't want to do a deal, I, don't, I do not care if they do a deal or not. I'm just trying to help them do what they're trying to do. Right? Does that help? Discount broker? I would probably say... What? Right? What? I would say, what's got you thinking about using a discount broker? Yeah. Um, for discount brokers, um, okay, so I'm trying to understand the scenario. So you said for sale by owner, you walk in and they say something about discount broker, right? Well, number one, with the for sale by owner, this is this goes back to what I was talking about before, right? I'm trying to understand why they're selling, where they're moving, and if they have an agent they're working with on the next property they're going to buy. Right. And I'm really trying to dig in there because if I represent them as a buyer, a buyer's agent, they're not paying a commission. So they're probably more than happy to work with me on the buying side than the selling. And I know 87 percent of for sale by owners end up listing their properties anyway. Who do you think they're going to list with if I'm sitting here not even trying to list, but more so just help them through their situation if there's an opportunity for me to do so? Maybe they have an agent they're working with already on the buy side, whatever the case may be. And if that is the case, then chances are if it's in the area, they're probably going to work with that agent if they list the property. So I have to understand what it's, <laughs> there's so much to situations. Every situation is totally different. You have to dig in and do serious discovery on this to really find out what's happening, um, to see exactly where the opportunities are for you to capitalize on to help these people. Um, but just generally speaking on discount broker stuff, somebody says, hey, discount broker this, discount broker that, hey, knock yourself out. Go try the discount broker. Come back and tell me what you think. And guess what? They're going to be running right back to you and happy to pay whatever you, you charge. Right? Go, go look at the reviews of discount brokerages. Um, it's discounted for a reason. You're really going to trust the, <laughs> the largest transaction in your life, uh, you know, against the cheapest price out there. And by the way, I'm negotiable. What are they charging? So what is a discount broker charging? What's an example? Uh, one hour, two and a quarter, right? And then, and, and what's that? Yeah, like knock yourself out, Mr. Seller. <laughs> I'm not going to do two and a half, two and a quarter, two, whatever the case may be. Um, I can negotiate, but you know, I'm going to pay the buyer agent. Like in my market standard is two and a half to three percent. I'm not going to go below two and a half. If I take four and a half, I'm going to get two. If I take four, I'm going to get one and a half. I'm not going to go below two and a half for the buyer agent. Um, but yeah, like let them go. I don't have an objection handler for that. <laughs> like, go, you want to go try that? Go, go see what it's like and let me know. Same thing with the market. If, if they say I'm worried about the market, you know what that's them telling you? I don't want to do a deal right now. And this is the excuse I've decided to tell you, Mr. Agent, to, to tell you what you might want to hear to leave me alone. So you have to read between the lines with prospects. The problem is that agents try to make every prospect a deal today. And 90% of prospects are not a deal today. And so you have to, as you become more and more experienced, you'll, you'll, gain, the, you'll gain the experience to be able to read between the lines a lot better because you've encountered so many situations where they tell you something and you know, because you know how that ended up with the last prospect or they say one thing and do another, right? Never, ever, number one, ask an agent what their client's going to do, right? There's a listing. You call the listing agent. Hey, they're asking 600. What do you think the lowest they'll take? Never do that. Number one, he doesn't know. Even if the seller said 590 is as low as I'll go, that means nothing because he gets an offer for 565 cash to close in 10 days. He might take it. And now the agent said 590 because that's what their client said. And the offer never even happens because they were going to offer 565. And now a deal literally just disappeared. Never assume your, what your client says is true. <laughs> Never assume what they say is what they're going to do or what they really think. Think about that. Don't take it for face value. This is part of our job as a real estate agent to understand human, human psychology behind 
what we wh how people you know what their behaviors are around us providing the best service possible but anyway did you have any other further questions about the market and definitely uh i you know a lot of people there's so much information being pushed off and like negative about my cow but like in real just have to I mean, all you have to do is show them the stats of your market and show them how prices have went up over the last 60 days. I don't I don't know what you're reading, but here's a chart that shows prices bottoming out about February, and now they're here, and they're actually positive on the year. So what, do you have any more questions, Mr. Prospect? Prices are up. There's no, we're historically low inventory. Moving into a year where there's more 33-year-olds than we've ever seen in our life, who it was the beginning ages of the average first-time home buyer. We have more pent up demand than we've ever seen in history. And we don't even know it because of mortgage rates. When mortgage rates ease down with inflation, it's going to be a tsunami. And we're going to have, his, we're below 2021 inventory right now. What do you think is going to happen? Prices. That's a, it's an Alabama sound. Right? That's why I'm buying houses. I closed on one last week. I have three more in a contract, single family homes. I'm buying as many as I can buy, around 300, new construction, built in the 2000s, whatever. I'm buying everything I can see. Why? Because I know where this is headed. What, they, they don't answer? They ghost you or you do talk to them? Okay. This, this, this goes right into what I was just saying. We're all trying to make the prospect the deal today. Listen to what they want. They say, no, I'm just looking. Great. What are you thinking about doing later? Do you have an agent you're going to work with on that? I'd love to work with you when you do decide you want to do something. The conversion is going to be when they buy or sell, which is up to them, not us. So why not put yourself in the best position to be their agent when they decide to do the deal? That's the conversion. It's not you do a deal today or not and you converted it or not. The conversion is the relation, the lifelong relationship with that first that that person. Period. The lifelong relationship is the conversion. So does that change your 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 perspective? The, the, the thing is though, is that closings happen every day, regardless of market conditions, right? You believe this? Okay. So why are we trying to make every person a deal that doesn't want to do a deal? and more so concentrate on as the, a volume of prospects to hopefully find one that, that is doing one of these deals that are closing every day. Meanwhile, taking the 90% of prospects who don't and saving them for later when they do. That's when your business blows up. Three to five years out, not this year. You have to build your base up. What do you think? Um, what kind of conversations are you having during the follow-ups knowing in maybe a year, and I don't want to lose touch, I don't want to know or social media? Just any for a conversation. If I have a lead, if something like that. Mm -hmm. What do you do to stay in touch with the people in your database? Oh, I mean, I'll let you. Isn't the apocalypse happening? You gotta What's that? The apocalypse is happening. You got to buy today. There's not going to be a world next year. Did you tell them that? <laughs> like the buildings, all the condos yeah, are going to crumble and like. Get off all the new mining capital. Everything is going to. Yeah, exactly. Because like the whole earth is going to be covered in water. Um, no, no, listen, the thing is, is okay. Hey, Mr. So-and-so, Hey, Mr. So-and-so, this is whoever, whatever real estate company, whatever area, how you doing? Cool. Me too. I'm enjoying the days and gorgeous. Listen, I so don't want to take too much of your time. I saw you were looking at some stuff online or whatever. Call to follow up to that. See if there's anything I can do to help you. Tell me what's going on. You want to hear the story. That's it. Once you understand the story, oh, we're just looking, we're going to think about buying something next year. Great. Do you have an agent that you're going to work with on that? Do you have a lifelong relationship with an agent already in place? Is your mom an agent, right? So many agents walk away from a, from a conversation thinking, I got this client and their mom is an agent. You're never going to get that client, right? It's like, collect data. Yeah. Weekly email to your entire database on the same day of the week forever. And I, I would say social media. So and, and social media. Yeah, sorry, I talked a lot. What what do you what do you think the uh, organic reach is of of social? I do a hundred percent of my business off of social. I know, but I'm saying organic reach, like the number of your followers that see your posts. Oh, ten percent. Ten percent, right? Ten percent. 
So with the email, what's that? At best. Yeah, right. It's lower than 10%, honestly. Yeah. So w what I'm saying is just trying to open you guys up, open your mind up just a little bit, okay, to number one, make calls all morning and make videos all afternoon, 100%, right? You, you, if you want to be the most dangerous real estate agent, you're going to utilize, for me, the top three activities, which is which are calls, making videos, creating social content, and a weekly email. A weekly email is going to have 90% organic reach. The amount of people in your database, 90% will see it in their inbox at least um, every week on the same day of the week, right? Where versus 10% on social. Now social is every day versus every week. So it all plays together, right? But if you can connect the dots there between massive organic reach and the amazing visibility of social media, right? Through the weekly email and video, think about how dangerous of an agent you are. And then if you clock in making calls every morning into that equation, it's just a matter of time before you're a millionaire. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now we all got into the business and in, in real estate is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. So I don't care if you get your leads from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Zillow, Realtor.com, Realty.com, uh, social media of any sorts, sphere of influence, cold calling, open houses, door knocking. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is, is that who, however you do get your leads, you're calling them all morning, creating those conversations, going deeper into those relationships, seeing what you can do to help, right? And that's when you're going to start closing deals every single week. Make videos all afternoon. Do a weekly email. Like if you keep it that simple, where you put together processes where you're waking up, you're having fun, you're calling people, not to sell them, to help them, right? And then creating videos, you've got a system around that. You know, you're gonna sit down for 30 minutes or so and create that weekly email. You're gold. It's just a matter of time, right? But understand the organic reach. Now, following up with people who are gonna do something a year from now, it's like when they're in your ecosystem where they're seeing you on social, they're seeing the weekly emails, you got a really, really, really good chance that they're going to call you when they decide to do something. If you have all these systems in place and you're working a volume slash quality game, but the volume part has to be there. Guys, if you want a large business, at some point you can say, I'm working this client and I'm giving them all this great service and, and I'm working three or four clients right now. Okay, that's great that you're getting on this great service, but when is it going to be about volume of clients? Until you have a volume of clients, you're not going to have a large volume of sales. So at some point, you have to play the volume game as well. And what you'll learn is that you don't have to give as much quality as you were giving and still give them the same warm. You can spend 10% of the time on, on each client of what you think you need to spend and give them the same warm and fuzzy feeling that you care about them and that 10% and now have time to make nine more clients feel like you are the most caring, hardworking, honest, professional agent out there, right? So under like trying to get that down, that balance between quality and volume and quantity, and then putting just some really simple systems in place around who, what is my lead gen, right? There, if you wrote down on a list, every lead gen activity you could think of, okay? How many, you how many do you think if we all got in this room, these 200 people got, got together and said, let's come up with a list of the top of every, not the top, every lead gen activity, how many do you think we come up with? Too many. 50? Really? Because I've done this with several groups and we got to about 25 yeah. and then it starts to become just different variations of the same thing. There's not that many. If you sit down and really brainstorm and got this list of lead gen activities, it's really not as long as you think. 20 to 30 at most, and then you just start coming up with weird stuff that you'll never do, right? Pro probably after three is the weird stuff. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, is when you have that list, it's like, here's your hit list. What two of these activities work best for you that you uh, feel good about as far as uh, ROI on your time and investment of whatever that activity is? Only you know that. As far as where to put your money, sir, in your pocket. I'll riddle you this. All those, all the realtor.com, realty.com, Zillow, 
even social media, let's just go with all online leads, okay? What is the objective of that lead gen activity of creating the videos or paying Zillow? What's the objective? Anybody? No. Okay, no. but what, but what, but what, but what is the, what, where are we trying to get to? Close of five minutes. Close of communication. Nurturing the right. Uh, the Sounds like Charlie Brown's uh, teacher. Y'all are just like, womp, womp. Every single Legion activity, okay, comes right back to the same, the same funnel comes back to the same point. I don't care where you, where you go, it's going to come back to the same thing. What do you think that is? Conversation. A real live one-on-one -on -one conversation. Okay, you with me so far? Every single thing, you pay Zillow 200 or 500 or 1,000 a lead or 35% to Obsidy or you spend all this time, money, and energy on YouTube just to get to hopefully a conversation with the prospect that might want to buy or sell, correct? Okay. So if I know that everything leads back to just a conversation, and conversation is the gatekeepers, the key to all closings. Not going to have a closing without a conversation. It could be digital. It could be a voice to voice, in person. There's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one conversation before anything is gonna happen. So if I know that, and I could go and, and collect the data, cell phones and emails of the exact property owners that own the exact properties I wanna sell and just call them and have the conversations, and I could get that information for a penny, it's a hack. All the, all the videos that I'm gonna make are hopefully gonna go into the stratosphere and bring me back this owner that owns this property you wanna sell or somebody that wants to buy this property, right? I can skip all the stratosphere stuff and just call them right now. I don't have to wait. I can do it right this second. You guys know I'm big on social. Like, I, it is the reason why I don't have to sell property anymore. I believe in it more than the earth itself. Okay, like it is like, thank God, because I literally don't have to go on listing appointments anymore because of the businesses I built on social media. I believe in it more than anything. But when it comes to building my real estate business, I still don't do social media. Why? Well, I consider email a social media platform. It's a place where I post consistent original content. I do consider email a social media. So I do do social media when you think about it like that. But when it comes to lead gen, I can literally, if I have a list of all the property owners of subdivision, I have their cell phone and email, I can, pre if I need to pretend like those are Zillow leads, you can even call them with the same, with the same script and say, hey, I saw you were looking at some property online, call them to follow up with that, see if there's anything I can do to help you. Yeah, 100%. What's the chances that they were looking online at some properties in the last six to eight months, 10 months? And guess what? The leads that you're buying from Realty.com, Realtor.com, Zillow are the same people. But not only that, they're sending you random people. And this is a targeted person, the exact person you want to do business with for a penny. And you just call them and have the same conversation, build a relationship. I'm a get it done kind of guy. So when I realize this hack, I'm like, I don't, I don't need to do anything else. I'm just going to put some sandals on and just for the rest of my life, just surf through this business because I'm fixing to go to the top. Because once I realize that, I'm like, I'm going to bypass every single agent around here that's doing direct mail and whatever they were doing. I still don't know. I think you have, you have one over there. Yeah. So on the list, how do you keep track of your bait without letting someone fall in the drag? Baseless without following someone coming. Like the people that might do some data. You have a list and you want to keep that between 15 and 20 if you only do one deal a week or 25 plus to do two deals a week. And you're going to keep that either on a notebook or a Google Sheet or how, wherever, whatever's best for you to keep that list. And That's divide, easy. Divide it by two. If they say six months, it's three months. No, no, 20. You make it as long as big as you can. Yeah. Depends on the depends on why in eight months. See, th this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to get through. Like, you want to sell in eight months? You want to buy in eight months? Great. What's going on in eight months? What's got you thinking about that? Let me hear the life story. And do you want to close in eight months, or do you want to start the process in eight months? There's so much more to what's happening here that I have to know before I, they're going on the list or not. If it's if they're if you're like, 
oh, your daughter's graduating in seven months. Y'all don't need the extra bedroom and you want to live on the water. This is a serious situation. They're going on the list. But if they say, if I'm going to do something in eight months and they say, oh, we're just going to see what the market's doing in eight months, they're not going on my list. They're going on my database to get weekly emails and see my social media and come back to me when they want to do something, if they ever do. So do you wait for them to come in to you or eight or? It depends on it. It depends on why they want to do it. I don't know the situation. It's different for every prospect. I can't tell you how, how I'm going to handle the follow up. Just generally saying somebody wants to do something in eight months. It's going to be different for every prospect, depending on what's going on in their life. that's causing them to make that decision. Until I know that, I can't tell you. And even still, like when, when I hear questions like that, and this doesn't mean to single you out, but this is for everybody. When I hear questions like that, I just, I know you're not doing enough because you wouldn't have that question if you were talking to more people. You'd already have it linked in. So like when Ricky's talking, like you're three by three, right? You used to talk about it all the time, the three hours, three days a week. Yeah. Right? So if you make calls for three days a week, three hours a day, you wouldn't have questions like that because you'd already have built out systems. So what happens is you're looking for the magic bullet. And again, I'm not saying, you know, and I know this is almost everybody when I talk to people, is you're looking for a magic bullet when you have to understand you need to have like a machine gun shooting thousands of bullets every day. Right? So you just need to be making hundreds of calls, hundreds of messages, hundreds of DMs, and you won't have system questions because you'll just build it naturally for follow-up. So that one, and then, yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Prospecting, whenever you're picking a neighborhood, how? Yeah. Where you want Cri to be. Criteria for like, to pick a circle prospect in neighborhood. Are there houses there? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Pick, pick where you want to work. Honestly, no. Like turnover doesn't mean anything. There could be some somewhere where no houses are sold in four years. Probably a bunch of people ready to get ready to sell in there. You know what I mean? And if they hadn't sold, if there's nothing sold in four years and nothing's going to be sold four years from then, that means that all those people are incredibly wealthy. And they probably own a ton of commercial. They probably own a. When you're talking to a prospect, guys, listen to me. Don't concentrate on the property. Use the property as an excuse to get into a conversation to see if you can get to know them. All the expires I did business, a lot of the expires I did business with were, were buyers. I call and say, hey, I saw this is for sale. Now it's not. What happened? They tell me the story. I'd, I'd follow, I'd flow through the conversation and come to find out they want to buy this lot. They want to buy this investment property. But a lot of people are just stuck on, stay at the appointment. People, people don't know, want to know what to do, okay? Yeah. And this, this goes for social media. People don't want to know what you're saying fluff, right? The fluff that he's talking about. That's what you guys are putting on social media. You're saying, hey, you should do this, but you're not telling them how to do it, right? And, and, and where we are in the maturity curve of the internet is that everybody has heard all the mindset stuff. They already know what they should be doing, right? We're at the stage of the internet's career that people want to know not what to do. They've heard that a million times, but how do we do it? Where's the hack? How's the one, two, what's the one, two, three of how to do something? So remember that when you're making videos. Don't tell people what to do. Tell them how to do it. You're going to get better engagement. That, that stuff worked in 2019. Cool. Guys, hold on. We only have like two more minutes. I'm going to get to her question. Um, but I do want to give you guys my scripts. Do you want my scripts? Okay. And also throughout the, uh, the shareholder summit, I'm speaking tomorrow, the next day. I'm going to make live calls at the uh, breakout session Friday at 2 o'clock. I'm going to make live calls on stage. So look that up in your little app and come to that. Only like 200 people go in there. There's about like 2,000 trying to get in. Um, but text me at this number and I'll send you my scripts. And I'm also going to be picking some people to do coaching calls with and stuff like that. Okay. Ready? Two, five, one, three, one, two, eight, eight, four, four. Just text me. Hey, or something. All right. Put your two, five, one, three, one, two, eight, eight, four, four. We have like 60 seconds. So what was it? Where you feel like you're somebody else. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't have confidence in yourself because you're new. Okay. People only want confidence. So when, when tell me a question that intimidates you from a seller being a new agent. I can't even think of it. Okay. The, uh, the, most, most, the most common. Yeah, the most common. How many properties have you sold? Yeah. Zero. And that's why you want me as your agent. Mm-hmm. 
because I'm going to spend every waking hour on just your deal because it's the only deal I have. No, 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 no. No, don't do that. No, we don't like fake it till you make it. Well, uh, you're faking it in your mind. I mean, but like, what, what, you going to tell me to do 100 we, deals? We, that how you're going to fake it? Right. No, we yeah, this is it. People, people love honesty. Yeah. So if you're like, none, and that's why you want me, because if you want 100 deal a year, Ricky, go down to his office, look at him right in the eye and say, where's my deal going to be out on your priority list? I guarantee it's not going to be at the top. I guarantee he's not going to spend eight hours a day on just your deal like I am. Yep. And if that, and, and if that person, if that seller goes and picks another agent, fine. Somebody's going to give you a chance. Yep. We all had someone give us a chance when we we're brand new. Somebody will like you if you don't act scared every time you talk to them. Because if you act, if, if you're not confident, if you act scared, they're not going to want to do business with you. There's plenty of other confident agents out there. So if you can master that part of it, that I'm confident in what? Because you haven't sold anything. Confident in the fact that you want to help them more than anyone else. And you have the time. Oh, I, I call so it fun. acting as if. Very different than faking it till you make it. Thank you, guys. So, yeah. Uh, I didn't even like... I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs and these lames ain't like me.